In the last video, we talked about series circuits and how we figure out all of the power, resistance, voltage, current, all the relationships between them. Now let's talk about parallel circuits. So parallel circuits get a little bit weird just because the resistance, when you can't just add all of the resistances together, the actual total resistance is gonna be less than it would be if it was all of the resistance added together. So you can find this out with a multimeter, but we're more interested in doing this mathematically. So the rules in parallel circuits, we still have Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law, KVL and KCL, but with Kirchhoff's voltage law in a parallel circuit, our voltage is gonna be constant across each one of the resistors. If you remember the last video series circuits, there's a voltage dropped across each one of the resistances. So the, the rule is a little bit different, but just uh, the, the current was constant in a series circuit. In this, in a parallel circuit, voltage is going to be constant and current is gonna be the thing that's different that changes depending on the resistance. So Kirchhoff's current law says that the current per branch is gonna be proportionally affected uh, based off of the resistance of that branch. So we have to analyze the resistance of each branch and that will determine within that branch how much current is flowing through that one resistor. So each one of the branches is gonna have a little bit different current as we try to figure these out. Total resistance looks a little bit different. Before in a series circuit, we were saying we just add up all the resistances. We have a different formula that we use to figure out total resistance of a parallel circuit and it's the inverse sum of inverses <laughs> rule. So we're taking the sum of the inverses of each one of them. So if we have two ohms, the inverse of that would be one over two or one half. Um, so we add all of those together and then we, dip, we take the inverse of that number. Kind of confusing, we'll get into it here in a second, but essentially one over one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over Rn. Again, uh, Rn just means like any number, however many of these resistors you have, you just keep adding them up. Um, and then you take that sum, add all that together and put one over that and that's what your total resistance is. So you can kind of see because it's inverses of inverses, we're getting smaller and smaller than it would be for any one of those resistors itself. Um, there's also another thing that's called the product over sum method. If you have two resistors in a parallel circuit, you can actually take the product of those two. So if it's like two and four, uh, two ohms and four ohms, you would just multiply two times four over the sum of two plus four. So product over sum is um, R1 times R2 to get the product over the sum of R1 plus R2. Um, and I will show you an example here at the end. I'll give you both so that you can see you still get the same answer, but it's only good for two resistors. So you have to be a little bit careful. It's still more precise just to use this. All right, then we have power lastly. So power is a function of voltage squared over the total resistance of a circuit. Um, we're not going to use that specifically, but that is a formula that you can figure out power in terms of resistance and voltage. Usually with Ohm's law, you're only talking about resistance, voltage, and current. And with Joule's law, it's power transfer. So you're talking about power um, over you know, voltage and current. It's not, power and resistance don't often go in the same formula, but you can still figure these things out because there's these alternate versions on the formula wheel for how you can combine power and resistance in the same equation. So that would be an equation that you could use for that. So let's go into the crazy numbers. I know there's a lot there to digest, but let's look at a example of a parallel circuit. So say that we have a 50 volt power source. So our E or voltage is 50 volts. Uh, we've got a two ohm resistor that is in parallel with a four ohm resistor. So R1 is two ohms, R2 is four ohms. And because of that, the current is gonna change depending on the resistance. So the resistance here is gonna make a certain amount of current flow. And when we take our voltage and connect it across a different resistor, different resistance, we're gonna get a different amount of current that flows through this portion of it. So we're gonna have two different currents, right? That's the only, that's the inverse almost of what we were dealing with in the series example. So the first thing that we wanna do is figure out what our voltage is and just prove that Kirchhoff's voltage law is true, that we were gonna have the same voltage across the whole circuit, doesn't really matter. Voltage across here is gonna equal voltage across here. So we take E1 equals I1 times R1. We're talking about our voltage 
for the first portion of the circuit times the 25 amps of, or the I1 times R1, which is two ohms. So 25 times two is 50. So that checks out, right? 50 volts here. And it should be proven across this resistor with this much current flowing, and it does. Second thing, we do the same thing. We have our voltage for this second circuit, and that is 50 uh, should equal whatever the amp draw is across that resistance when we connect that 50 volts, and it is. 12.5 amps times four ohms is 50 volts. So that proves Kirchhoff's voltage law. So it doesn't really matter. Voltage is always gonna be constant. Next, we're gonna mess with current. So current uh, is, we're gonna change around our equation. So instead of solving for E, we're gonna be solving for I, for current. So I1 right here is equal to the voltage over the resistor in that branch. So uh, I1 equals E over R1. So I1 is gonna be 50 volts, that's what's applied, divided by two ohms for resistance and we get 25 amps. So that shows to be true. And to show that we have a different current on this side because we have a different resistance, we've actually increased the resistance, we've doubled the resistance. So I2 for this circuit uh, is equal to the supplied voltage with the 50 volts divided by four ohms and we get 12.5. So you can see we doubled the amount of opposition, the amount of resistance for that current to flow. So we have halved the amount of current that can flow. So 12.5 times two is 25, right? So anytime we increase our resistance, we're going to be decreasing our current flow. Next is gonna be the total resistance. So total resistance, we figure this is a lot different, but the first example of this, we have two resistors, right? We have a two ohm and a four ohm. So this equation, one over, one over R1 plus one over R2, we plug in for R1, we plug in two, that's our R1. For R2, we plug in four because R2 is four ohms, and that gives us one half plus one quarter. And one half is just two quarters, right? So we're adding a third quarter, so we get three quarters. So one over three quarters or one over 0.75, and that gives us 1.3 repeating ohms. So we have 1.3 repeating ohms for the total resistance of this circuit, which is less than either one of these resistances. That's what happens with parallel circuits. We actually get way less resistance in a parallel circuit than either one resistance by itself or the summation of two of them, but you wouldn't do that. So the other thing is I talked about the product over sum method. We can do a different calculation, a little bit easier to do and not going through all this crazy one over one over jazz. <laughs> we could just do resistance one times resistance two product over sum. So the sum of R1 plus R2. So two times four over two plus four is eight over six or 1.3 ohms. So we still get the same values either way. Remember, we can only use product over sum with two resistors in the parallel circuit. If we've got three or more, we have to use this. Otherwise we're gonna start getting wonky numbers. Now, the last thing we need to do is power. Uh, we have to figure out what's the power for resistor one and what's the power for resistor two. And then we add them up together because there is a certain amount of heat that's being dissipated from this one certain amount of heat that's being dissipated from these. We'll just imagine that these are like two toaster elements that for some reason are different sized. Um, or they could be like, I don't know, any kind of like a furnace heating element. And we're just saying that the, tr the electrical power, the electrical energy is being transferred into heat energy. So the amount of heat that is being transferred or power that's being consumed um, is going to be equal to whatever this one is plus this one. So for, for P1, we're gonna say P1 is associated with R1. The power that is dissipated is equal to the amount of current flowing through that resistor times the applied voltage. So we're applying a voltage over a resistor and we're getting a certain amount of heat that radiates and 25 amps of current is flowing to make that heat dissipate. So we get 25 amps times 50 volts is 1250 watts. So there's 1250 watts coming off of that thing in the form of heat. Then P2, we do the same thing. We just figure out whatever our current is for this branch, which is 12.5 times whatever voltage we're applying across a four ohm resistor. Um, P2 equals I2 times E. Um, so 12.5 times 50 is 625 watts. So this one actually has 
uh, twice as much resistance, so it would make sense. There's not as much current flowing through, so there's not gonna be as much heat coming off of that thing. So it is going to be less wattage. Now the total for the entire circuit, how much heat is, is being dissipated or how much of that electrical energy is being transferred into heat energy is the total of P1 plus P2. So total power is 1250 plus 625, 1875 watts total. So hopefully that helps uh, helps you figure out with parallel circuits. Um, they're a little bit trickier once it comes to total resistance, but beyond that, it's really not all that crazy. So if you missed it, you didn't watch the series video, you should definitely go check out the series video as well because I break this entire thing down the exact same way in the series video.